said we can bring in France 24's international affairs commentator Douglas Herbert who was listening uh, to that press conference with me. Uh, Doug, first things first. Uh, yesterday, NATO Secretary General uh, Jens Stoltenberg said Ukraine was going through more ammunition than can be produced. Lloyd Austin was vague when asked what is being done uh, to ensure Ukraine gets what it needs. Absolutely. He, he stuck to vague formulas because it's hard to be more specific at this point. Uh, what we do know is exactly what you just said, that these are two sides that have been firing howitzers at each other, Russia and Ukrainian forces, at an extremely high rate. And the rate of their usage of this ammunition is far outpacing the ability of Ukraine's allies, both in Europe and the United States, to manufacture that ammo, to get it to the front fa fast enough and replace it. Hence, one of the questions from a journalist, an interesting one, is, uh, is the U.S. somehow going to invade on Ukraine or somehow communicate to its leaders uh, you know, lay off, cool, cool down a little bit with the uh, with the ammunition, fire a little less. Uh, you know, and that's obviously not something that the U.S. can dictate uh, to the Ukrainian uh, to the Ukrainian military. But it's obviously something that they're very cognizant of the attrition, as they would say. Uh, and you know, we heard uh, General Milley talking about that grinding. He said a grinding, brutal war of attrition around the Bakhmut area along the front line in eastern Donbass in, in the Donbass region. And it's exactly there that you're seeing, you know. This this heavy usage of fire, of back and forth, the attrition of, of supplies. This is really uh, the heart of the message today because the narrative, there's sort of a, uh, two narratives going on here. On the one narrative is people saying, when are the planes coming? You know, okay, so we had deals already on the heavy tanks. Are the, are the, are the aircraft, are the jet fighters going to come now? And what, what these two military men were essentially saying, well, Lloyd Austin, Secretary of Defense, Milley, the Joint Chiefs of, of Staff, um, what they're basically saying is we need to um, help the Ukrainians right now train, maintain, and sustain. Those were the words of, mm. of Austin. What he means by that is to consolidate and effectively use the equipment that they already have or the equipment that will be in the pipeline, notably the, the artillery, the heavy artillery, notably the heavy tanks that are coming, to be able to have enough ammunition before they see it as before they rush ahead on the aircraft. Uh, now, will the day come when perhaps the West does have to, as it did with the tanks and other weapons in the past, bend and end up supplying that aircraft? Perhaps, yes, judging from past precedent, that day will come at some point. Um, but for now, the emphasis appears to be, from everything we heard today, on this sense of coordinating what's already been pledged, what is promised in the pipeline, making sure that the Ukrainians are well enough trained to use the equipment that's coming down through the pipeline and getting it deliverable, delivered as quickly and as efficiently as it can. Get it to the battlefield because that's where it's needed. I think both of these leaders signaled the fact that they're both fully aware, as are the rest of the European and U.S. allies and the NATO allies, that every day counts because Russia right now, it's not the coming offensive. The offensive it's underway. is underway. It is mm. happening here and now. The headline shouldn't be when Russia launches an offensive. The offensive is already happening ferociously around Bakhmut, but elsewhere. And Putin knows that he has perhaps a limited window before that heavy weaponry, if not, will not perhaps freeze the conflict in place, at least will make it a lot harder for Russian forces to maneuver in such a way as to take more territory.